How many of you have found that uh, sometimes when you worry about a symptom, it seems to be prolonged? Yeah. It seems to get worse. Yeah. But there were times you had a condition and you were too busy and you forgot about it or whatever, you just ignore it. And the next day you got up and said, where did the pain go? Yeah. It was almost like when you let go of it, all right, the healing flow. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And of all the blessings he could give us, he says, and I will give you rest. Think of all the blessings that God has, all right, in His storehouse to give us. Of all the things, He says, I will give you rest. Wow. The supply from heaven has already been released. Yes. All right, it's not like you start praying, then God starts supplying. That's right. When Jesus died on the cross, the heavenly supply for all our needs has been released. Yes. Righteously. Now there's a righteous outlet because the blood of Jesus has purchased for us yes. rightfully. Amen. So if the supply is coming our way and God is already supplying, then someone may say, pray tell me how come I'm not receiving it? I am not seeing it. It's not manifesting in my life. And if you look at what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, He kept on repeating, don't worry about what you shall eat, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. It's not the life more than food and the body than clothing. Then he says, look at the birds of the air. They sow not, neither do they reap. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Yeah. Are you not much better than the birds? And yet I say unto you, all right, he says that you are of more value than those birds. If God feeds the birds, how much more will he feed you? Yeah. And look at the lilies of the field, he says. Look at how they are clothed, all right, and how they grow. Notice how they grow. How do you grow spiritually? How do you grow in your health? Because early on the Lord said, it's not the life more than food, right? And the body more than clothing. Now, obviously Jesus is not stating the obvious. It'll be redundant. It's not the life more than food. How is life more than food if it's a miserable life? <laughs> How is the body better than clothing if it's a diseased body? Wow. Obviously it's giving us the secret of a quality life and a quality body. Mm. And the one thing that we need to do, and he kept on repeating is, let go. Mm. Take no thought for your life. Mm. And it's almost as if it goes against the grain of everything that we, uh, sure. you know, the, the world system. Is that do, don't, just, don't just stand there, yeah. do something. <laughs> yeah. But God's way is stand still yes. and see the salvation of the Lord. Come on now. So wow. it goes against, it's not exactly your traditional, how-to book, you know, the things that you must do, seven steps, eight steps, you know, uh, certain position and breathing exercises. It's more than that. It's something from heaven itself, that one thing you can do. Yes, it's based, based on just that one truth, but it tells you how to let go, which is one of the hardest things for men to do. You're okay, right. you, you were just quoting the Sermon on the Mount, yeah. yes? And Jesus says, don't worry, right. but when we do, we're blocking that we're blocking supply. The supply. That's the like, premise of this. When he said, exactly, when he says, uh, consider lilies of the field, how they grow. Notice how they grow. He went on to say, they toil not. Mm -hmm. And yet we think that by toiling, by working hard, we grow. Mm -hmm. And that's the system of the world. But Jesus says, look at the lilies of the field. How they grow, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet Solomon, the wealthiest man in history, and probably to date still, was not arrayed like one of this. And he says this, that if God clothed the lilies of the field, which today is, tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? Therefore, take no thought. In other words, if we refuse to take hold of anxious thought over our lives, God will clothe us with a quality body, quality health, all right, better than the lilies of the field that are better arrayed than Solomon in all his glory. Yeah. And the only thing that is hindering us from receiving the supply, all right, and many years ago, I received a vision from the Lord. And I'm very careful about talking about receiving visions because it's been so abused, all right? But this time I received an inner vision from the Lord and later on it was confirmed in Zechariah 4. I saw a vision of golden pipes coming from heaven, all right, right over an individual, a believer. So one pipe ministers healing. Another pipe ministers financial uh, wisdom. Another supply brings flow. So different supplies and one for parenting, hmm. right? And there are golden pipes ministering golden oil 
on all of us. And later on, I saw in the book of Zechariah that such a pipe exists right in the book of Zechariah. And, uh, but the moment someone is worried about a certain area of your life, you constrict that supply. It is not like the supply uh, was not released. It has been supplied all the time. It's supplying all the time. All right. All right? God is supplying all the time. But as far as that area is concerned, it's clocked up because you're worried about the area, hmm. that particular area. And God said to me, many years ago, son, look at your life. And that's when he told me this, grace flows in the worry-free areas of your life. Wow. Look wow. at your life, he says. All the areas that you're not worried about, supply is there. Wow. But the very area that you're worried about, it seems like you're still struggling. Then he reminded me many years ago when I was a teenager, I know I, I look like only a few years after my teenage years, but <laughs> I'm going to pray for him though. Yeah. You know, and, <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, uh, I remember when I was down to my last $10 and I found out that my brother, my older brother, also had a financial need. So unbeknownst to him, I took out my $10, my last $10, and I put it into his wallet. He never knew it, all right? But for some reason on that particular day, supply would come. Someone would give me a treat, you know, bring me out for a meal. I began to realize early, I don't have to worry about money. Hmm. And this one area I don't struggle over. As a pastor, we've built a building that costs about 400 million U.S. dollars, you know, and uh, it's fully paid now. And uh, to God be the glory. Wow. But the thing is this, I've never worried about money and, and the supply is there, whether it's my, my life or my ministry. But then there are other areas I'm worried about, I'm concerned about. And now some people are worried about money and they're struggling in that area. So grace flows in the worry-free areas of your life. Wow. People are probably more stressed yes. and worried and uh, fearful and just name it off the chart in some cases than I think we've probably ever been before. Am I alone? No. So I think this is one of the most important messages in the body of Christ because that's hard. And I know as probably women, we probably worry a little more. We've got our children, we've got our husbands, we've got work, we've got you, we've got you. <laughs> you know, so, so life can get a little mad at times. Really? But this, yeah, but, <laughs> but you talk about in the book, and I love this book, um, you talk about the little lady with the issue of blood and she holds a key right. for us today. Can yes. you share a little bit about that? I love that. Yeah, you all know the story of the woman with the issue of blood. She's been suffering for 12 years, and uh, uh, instead of getting better, she got worse, and, and she spent all that she had. So now she's not just sick, she's broke, yeah. right? So she came by the press behind, and she touched the hem of his garment, right? And she was healed. Now, it was what Jesus said to her that was amazing. For years, I thought that he just says, woman, your faith has made you well, right? But if you read Mark chapter 5, it says that Jesus said to her, Woman, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. It sounds redundant. He's repeating himself twice, right? I used to think that he, he meant go in peace. But actually in the Greek, he told her, Woman, your faith has healed you. Go into peace. In the Greek, it is not go in peace. It's go into the realm of peace. Hmm. and stay healed. Oh, wow. And stay healed. So whatever wow. was, co was causing that problem in the first place, yeah. it could be the restlessness, the stress. And now uh, medical science have proven, uh, there are many medical studies that prove that stress can lead to yes. all right, physical and mental health problems. Right. All right? And also uh, destructive behaviors and, mm -hmm. and all kinds of uh, addictions and you know, uh, even chronic depression. So we, we need to learn the only labor that God tells us to in Hebrews chapter 4, the only labor is to labor to enter the rest. Yeah, wow. The only thing He tells us to fear in uh, Hebrews 4 as well, in verse 1, it says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering His rest. Wow. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Wow. Think about it. In every place, the Lord says, Fear not, fear not, fear not. And some say that there are about 365 times he's, I've never counted, but uh, one for every day. But there's one place he tells us to fear. Fear of not entering his rest. Wow. Fear of not being restful. Mm -hmm. And the only labor is a labor to enter the rest. So in every uh, spiritual attack, the enemy would come to you and say, 
what are you going to do about your boy? Yeah. Wow. What are you going to do about that situation? What are you going to do? The law emphasizes you. Thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not. Grace emphasizes the Lord. Yeah. I will, I will, I will. Amen. Right? So the whole idea is to, to bring you to that place <coughs> of being under the law that you are responsible. And we think sometimes to let go. If I let go, who's going to hold? Hmm. Mm. Now, it's true for the world, for the world, all right? When they let go, nothing happens. But for you, child of God, mm. when you let go, underneath are the everlasting arms. Yeah. When you let go, God takes hold. Yeah. When you take hold, yes. God lets go. Wow. Yeah. And many years he said this to me, many years ago he said this to me, when you work, I rest. Wow. When you rest, I work. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. You're, you're teaching this concept of allowing the finished work of Christ to have its way, right. you know, in our situations by not worrying. Right. Okay. That is, if you just tuned in, that's a 180 from the way that most self-help books right. uh, in most bookstores mm -hmm. Uh, would say you've got to make it happen, get after it, make you know, your to do list. Get, yes. get, get more education, get more this done, get, you know, yeah. and it's all about uh, us. So why don't you start again and just, I mean, I don't want you to repeat what you said, but, but basically mm -hmm. you're teaching a concept right out of the, right out of the Sermon on the Mount, right. but this is about getting things mm -hmm and getting the finished work of Christ applicable to your bad situation, tough situation, unusual situation, by the opposite of what maybe somebody else has heard, by letting go. So just in a little bit of a rephrase, uh, living the let go life is what? Living the let go life is a paradigm shift in your thinking, all right? Uh, the theological word is repentance. The word repentance is metanoia, which is change your mind, okay? And, and the thinking is this, it's not like I need to pray, I need to fast to get God to move. I need to, you know, pray, then God will do this, then God will heal me. Actually, when Jesus died, all right, everything is supplied. Mm. The veil in the temple was torn yeah. between God and man, the separation is, there's no more separation. All of God's supplies unleash upon a crying, sighing, dying world, amen? And it's the, the only thing that's holding us back is the capacities of our heart, you know? Our capacities for taking is always far lesser than His capabilities of giving. Mm -hmm. it, he always supersedes us. When He answers our prayer, it's exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. You know, when, when, when the parents came to ask Jesus to bless the children, just to touch them, Jesus embraced the children. He yeah. always exceeds our expectation. Right. And, and that, that's, isn't, isn't He wonderful? Yes, you know? yes. And our Lord is always, um, exceeds our expectation. Now, the thing is this, uh, we talk about grace and law, but sometimes people don't know how to apply this in a practical way in their lives. So what do you mean when, when I'm, un, I'm under law? It's possible to be under law in the morning and then be in grace in, at night. Wow. You know, uh, because law is all about demand. Thou shall not, thou shall not. All right. Grace is all about supply. Under law, God demands righteousness from sinfully bankrupt men. Under grace, God supplies righteousness to be received. Beautiful. So all you got to do is just receive it, right? So if law is all about demand and grace is all about supply, where are you at now? Mm -hmm. When you wake up in the morning, are you demand-minded? That God demands this of me, my boss demands this of me, my children demands this of me, my spouse demands... Are you demand-minded? If you're demand-minded, then effectively you are under law. All right, in the sense that right now you are susceptible to sin, to addictions, to depression, amen, to a destructive behavior. But if you have this mentality and we wake up in the morning, God supplies me the wisdom I need. I know I have that project to fulfill, but the supply will be there. Wow. And I got to handle my teenage daughter, but the wisdom will be there to speak to her. And I'll have the favor from God to speak to her. So you're supply minded. When Jesus saw the five loaves and two fish, the disciples said to him, what are this among so many? Jesus says, bring it to me. He looked at the supply. Yeah. He thanked the Father for the supply that visibly wasn't there. Amen? Amen? But nothing is more real than spiritual. 
is a spirit, the spirit being God that brought forth the physical world. Amen. Amen. So you can see that the supply is always coming our way. And the only thing that's hindering the supply is that we are worried. We are tense. We are wow. clogging up that, that, that golden pipe. So as far as we are concerned, the supply has not stopped from God, but it has stopped from our end. So I just say, let go <laughs> and let the supply flow. What do you mean by the unforced rhythms of grace? The unforced rhythms of grace, I love that. You know, in, in Mark chapter 4 and 5, we see a glimpse into the life of our Lord in one day, all in a day's work. Yeah. You see, it starts off with him preaching to the multitudes, you know, the parable of the uh, different grounds and so in the seat. And right after that, he told the disciples, let's go to the other side, all right? Then he fell asleep. He had his, his afternoon siesta, you know, yeah. well-deserved, I might add. And, uh, but in the midst of it, there was a storm that arose, and disciples woke him up, right? It wasn't the storm that woke Jesus up. It was the cry of his own. And then he woke up and he says, peace, be still. And the Bible says there was a great calm. Hmm. And then his sleep was disrupted. But on the other side, all right, there was a, the most demonized man in the Bible, Legion. He came around screaming and all that. And uh, Jesus, one word, commanded all the demons to leave. Go. And all the demons left. The people of the place came over and said, get away from our land. We don't need you here. He went back to the boat and went back to Capernaum, all the way back to Capernaum, all in one day. Over on the other side, Jairus came to him, the ruler of the synagogue, and he says, please come and, and lay your hand on my daughter. She's dying. So as the Lord was going on his way, that woman that we talked about just now, she came in the press behind and she got healed. And Jesus took time. He always had time. Hmm. And if you look at the Lord, there's such, I mean, no one accomplished more than Jesus did in three and a half years. Amen. Right? No one was more busier than the Lord, and yet no one was more restful. Wow. When you read the Gospels, you find that He has time for everyone, and yet He's able to accomplish everything in one day. Mm. And right after that woman, right, there came the news, don't bother the master, your daughter is dead. And even after someone is dead, he still has time to go all the way there, all right, and raise Jairus' daughter from the dead, all in one day. There's a rhythm, there's a cadence to his, his, uh, his life that we need to follow, you know. It's like, if you read the Gospels, just sit through and just read the life of Jesus, you find that there's such a rest about the Lord. And this is the rest that he promised us. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And of all the blessings he could give us, he says, and I will give you rest. rest. Mm. Think of all the blessings that God has all right, in his storehouse to give us. Of all the things, he says, I will give you rest. Wow. Mm. It must be that this rest, and by the way, in Hebrews, God says, I swore they will not enter my rest. All right? He talks about the promised land for the believer today. It's not a land flowing with milk and honey. It's a land of rest. It is... Even in the Old Testament, God says, I'll bring you to a land where you will eat from vineyards you didn't plant, you will drink from wells you did not dig, mm. and live in houses you did not build. Yeah. Everything is based on the work of another. You just enter in and enjoy what I have provided. Wow. I have prepared the way. So if we can just shift our mind to think, all right, that when the pain comes, all right, the supply is there already. Yeah. Yeah. The devil will not have attacked unless the supply was there already. Yeah. He's trying to make you think that you need to get healed, all right? But no, you are the healed. Yeah. You are already okay. And, and how many of you have found that uh, sometimes when you worry about a symptom, it seems to be prolonged. Yeah. It seems to get worse. Yeah. But there were times you had a condition and you were too busy and you forgot about it or whatever. You just ignore it. And the next day you got up and said, where did the pain go? <laughs> it was almost like when you let go of it, all right, the healing flow, all right? And by the way, in the Hebrew, the word rafa for healing, if you look at the etymology, the root word of rafa, rafa is healing, is the word rafa with a hey. Actually, rafa means relax. Wow. So relax is the root of the word heal. Wow. Right, we need to learn how to be relaxed, how to rest. So the, 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 the goal in our life is not to, to hold on to it, it's to learn to let go. Our labor is to labor to enter that rest. Our fight is not to fight. Right. Our labor is to rest. Yeah. And if we can just accomplish that and ask God for grace for that, yeah. all right, we will see the supply flow. Why should we live like a tortoise and not a lion? 
Yeah, talk about this uh, in, in my That's book. That's a very interesting question, I by thought the way. it was too. Why we should live like a tortoise <laughs> and not like a lion. You know, in the Bible, God teaches us uh, through animals. He says, you go to the end, you sluggard, and learn, you know, to be diligent. Um, the tortoise and the lion. The lion in, in the wild, um, you know, they, they got their territory, they fight for their prey. So to live like the lion is to, you know, to be always fighting for your place and fighting for your competitors, defending your, your ground, your territory at workplace, you know. <laughs> and um, uh, they found that, that lions in the wild have adrenal glands that are 25 times heavier than lions in captivity. Oh my goodness. And the adrenal gland is the, is the, the place where your, your stress hormones are released, the fight or flight, which means these lions in the wild are living under intense stress all the time, and they live short lives. All right? On the other hand, the tortoise, all right, <laughs> the average lifespan of a tortoise is about 100 years. <laughs> and you know, the tortoise takes his time. <laughs> Man, all right, one stubby leg over another, he chews his food slowly, not in a New York minute, all right? <laughs> he takes his time chewing, he's not frazzled, he's not hazzled, just like our Lord Jesus, that he's, not, he's never frazzled. He's never hurried. He's never pushed. Hmm. You know, he works in the rhythm of grace. He flows in a relaxed life. Yeah, by all means, do your responsibilities. Do what you need to do, but do it relaxed. Parent, relaxed. You know, uh, um, um, administrate, manage, relaxed. Do everything, relaxed. Because that's the secret. But the devil will come to you and say, look, you're not being responsible. Hmm. That's so irresponsible. Just let go. If you let go, nothing will happen. Hmm. That's what the devil would say. But, but actually, being, let, letting go is the most responsible and the most powerful thing you can do. Have you noticed that in that verse in 1 Peter 5, it says, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. All your cares, right? You know what's the verse after that? Most of us, we know that verse, right? You know what's the verse after that? Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, walks about Right, like, a, like a roaring lion, seeking home he may devour. The context there is that he's looking for people he can devour, which means the context there, if you are full of cares, you are full of anxieties, all right, you are stressed, you are the one that, that is devourable. Wow. So my advice is that let go your cares to the Lord who cares for you and become undevourable. Yeah. And as far as you are concerned, let the devil keep on seeking someone else. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. That work okay so how many have children do we mm. <laughs> most of us have kids and you're telling us to to let it go and you know some of us might have children that are wayward and, and we might think it's maybe too late to reach them how how does that help us yeah, for me uh, when i mentioned just now that grace flows in worry-free areas my area of st struggle I thought I was a pretty carefree person. I'm a cool guy, you know, just like going. But then after I got married, Jessica came along. All right, <laughs> it was after she came along, you know, and parents deal with this. One, the hardest area to let go sometimes is our children. Yeah. All right, because we love them so much. Yeah. All right, so it's hard for us to let go. And yet the most responsible thing you can do is to let go. You know, when, when Jessica, Jessica came along, every little whiff, cough, sneeze, I'll be saying to Wendy, What's wrong with her? Mm -hmm. uh, she coming down with something. I was always worried. And the more worried I was over Jessica, the more she came down with something. She was always going in and out to see the doctor. And I couldn't figure it out. So I asked the Lord, what's happening? The Lord says, simple. All right? Every time you are worried over, over Jessica, you are sending a message to the devil. That every, it's like a huge uh, button over Jessica that he can push. Push this button and your effectiveness for this Sunday is thwarted. Wow. Is restricted. Uh, um, push this button and your relationship with Wendy is affected. Mm -hmm. All right? Push this button. So no it's button like. That is? <laughs> it's a trigger. Are <laughs> <laughs> we talking about me now for some reason? That's my buttons. Oh. Got it. So the Lord says the, 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 the best thing you can do for your daughter, mm -hmm. the best thing you can do for your teenage daughter and your, your son, the best thing you can do for them is to cast them to the Lord yeah. and say, I let go. Yeah. Amen? When you do that, when I did that, for Jessica, I found that she became healthier, 
All right, she wasn't down with so much of this anymore. And I began to realize that it's the, it's the opposite of the way the world would act, right? Because I understand, as a single parent and those who are struggling with children that have uh, learning disabilities, behavioral disabilities, uh, being diagnosed with that, or, or, or dealing with temper tantrums of a young child, or even like as they grow older, the new challenges that come with teenage years, yeah. uh, even in, in their young adult years, you know, struggling with, with uh, complex relationships and things like that, or bad company and all that. Uh, uh, you know, you might think that it's easy for you to say that, but I have a teenager and I have a young child now, yeah. you know, and, and I believe that God has them all spread out because in my church we have a broad spectrum of people, right. so it keeps me relevant, yeah. you know, but uh, <laughs> um, it's not easy to tell a parent to let you. I remember this uh, uh, lady who came up to me in my church many years ago, and she has a daughter that is famous throughout our nation. Her daughter is a young girl at the age of 11. Uh, she, Every time she was in the sea games, she competed in, in, in swimming, swimming, swimming matches, all right, uh, meets. And she always won the gold medal. She has 40 gold medals wow. at the end of her career. 40 gold medals, all right, in, in our region of Asia, Southeast Asia. Now, um, she got into bad company, okay, and she was always partying and because of her fame and, you know, she, she's known. And, and, and her, her mom came, to, came up to me and says, is it too late for God to mm. arrest my teenage daughter? I said, it's never too late. But the first thing you got to do is like, let her go into the hands of the Lord. All right? And one of the hardest things, <laughs> I'll pray with you, I said. So we, I prayed with her, all right, to let go of this girl called Jocelyn. You can Google her and you'll find her name, you know, Jocelyn Yeo, the, the one. And she, up to, to, to date, she still has the greatest number of gold medals in Singapore. Wow. Right? And one day, one Sunday, Jocelyn came down. I didn't even know she was in the service. She came down right to the front to receive the Lord. Mm. You know, and, and the mom was just beside herself. Today, Jocelyn, one of the, the pastors you saw behind the green room just now, she's married to him. Oh. Wow. And she counsels in our church. She helps the young people in our church. She's a mother of four now. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's never too late. Yeah. All right? God cares for the things that, that burdens your heart, especially your children. Amen. But don't, never forget, He loves your children more than you can love them. Why in some cases... Uh, if Jesus said, and he did, it's finished. Right. Uh, and, you know, he said he came to seek and save the lost. He came he, to destroy the works of the devil. He described it's finished. So why do some things get held up? Uh, according to this book, get it, read it, uh, watch the TV program. It's because of our worry. Yeah. You got that from basically the Sermon on the Mount? Right. Um, Let's make sure that in case somebody just tuned in a little bit late, uh, the highlight of what we're talking about with let, live the let go life. Yeah. We have this uh, paradigm, a mental shift, you know, in terms of uh, thinking of like, when I pray, then God will supply me, right? Think of it this way. When Jesus died on the cross, you know, many of times we even make giving into a work. Like unless you give, you won't get a harvest. Actually, you don't give to be rich. You give because you believe you are rich. Oh, and wow. why are you rich? You are wow. rich because you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm quoting scripture now. All right, that though he was rich for your sakes, he became poor. Mm. Where did that happen? At the cross. He became poor. That you through his poverty might be rich. Mm. And then the very next chapter, it says, now give bountifully because you are rich. Wow. Now, if you give out of that, that sense of supply, the sense that you are rich, not because you are poor, you'll find the harvest wow. right, coming back, you know, because you are now, it's like praying. When you pray for victory, it seems like uh, it's still a distance, You're like so far out there, mm -hmm. you know. You, you, are, you are defeated even before you began. But if you pray from victory, you are now seated with Christ. Come on now. It's almost like, you know, uh, the, the Lord Jesus has, our starting point is that we are seated with Christ, mm -hmm. right? And from then on, the first thing in the book of Ephesians, before we learn to walk worthy of the Lord, walk like a prince that you are, all right? Before we can stand against the enemy, in the book of Ephesians, it says sit. We are seated in heavenly places. How do you get safe? You sit down. He's, it's all done. He has finished the work at the cross, and I sit. Amen? How do you get healed? Again, a fresh sitting, if you would. So when a devil comes to you and say, what are you going to do about it? This is what you do. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You sit. What a fresh sitting if you would. 
Amen. And, and when you sit, you know, the, the, the chair carries your weight. Yes. Right? You put all your, your, your weight on the chair. You don't worry about, about you know, bearing your own weight. And, and, and everything in life comes in your way, even though Christ has paid for it, it comes with a fresh sitting, if you would. Hmm. I mean, when you learn to sit, I remember when uh, uh, my team went out there to look for a place for our growing congregation, you know, we, we need a bigger building and all that. And I remember telling them, hey guys, you know, work out of rest, not out of stress. And hold things with a loose hand. If a deal, it seems like, uh, you know, it's so hard to get that deal or that building, you know, they always put up something and all that, let it go. All right, it wasn't God in the first place. If you have to fight and fight and fight, and there's a wall in front of you, let it go. God has something better. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I tell them that, and they have a few offers. We thought were good offers, but they always put up some wall and all that. We just say, let go. All right, until this place that we are meeting now weekly, this $400 million Star Performance Arts Center in Singapore, which is an award-winning uh, arts and cultural center. Um, when it came along our way, imagine that budget that I have to raise yeah. as a pastor, you know? But I asked the Lord for a word, and the Lord gave me from the book of Ruth, where Naomi said to Ruth about Boaz. Our heavenly Boaz is our Lord Jesus, he's our Redeemer. She said this to her, sit still, my daughter, for the man will not rest until he has finished the thing this day. Wow. So the Lord actually said to me, you sit still, don't worry about raising the funds, don't worry about raising the, you know, just sit still, until you know how the man will act, all right? In other words, when you sit still, he acts. Mm. When you act, he sits still, mm. amen. I, I want him to act, amen. Yeah. I don't want myself to act. So, uh, um, I, I don't know, when I look back and I look at a $400 million building, I mean, it's crazy, you know? Now I shudder when I think about it. <laughs> and how the money came and how, how the Lord has blessed. And honestly, we, we don't have too many miracle sit Sundays, we call it, we, you know, we raise only four out of five years. We had Miracle City Sundays, and yet the supply came in. And I don't tell pastors and leaders and all that. The answer is not in striving and you know, making people feel guilty and pumping them up and making them do more because they get into the flesh. Yeah. The secret is withdraw and rest. Beautiful. When you rest, you're not stressed. You know, when you rest, you're blessed. You know? And, and uh, uh, I think that the devil has managed to put this seed in people's heart. When you let go, you are being irresponsible. Wow. So he comes and what are you going to do about this? What are you going to do? Now when he comes to you, you say, nothing. He's going to take care of it. He's got it. He's got it. Every time he comes, what are you going to do about that problem? He's got it. Amen. Have that attitude. It's the most responsible thing you can do. This had happened. There was a student one time who was believing God for finances for his uh, theological college um, studies and all that. And, and he was, he was uh, strapped financially. So what he did was that he heard the message, let God do it, let God do it. So he tried his best, he put on, on a six card, you know, uh, each letter, let go, let God, let God, G-O-D, all right? And he put it in front of his bed, and every night he would look at, let God do it, let God do it. And yet, the supply wasn't coming. Mm. So one day he was praying, Lord, I'm trying my best to let you do it, but nothing is happening. His window was open, the wind blew it, the, the wind blew into the, into the room, knock off one card, D. D was knocked off. And he says, let go. <laughs> and, and, and true enough, the supply flow, okay? Wow. You, you know what's so funny is you always hear how God just waits till the 11th hour to come through. I think that's in our minds because I think we strive to do everything we possibly yes. can do up until there is nothing left for us to do. And then God comes through. So I think a lot of that is us striving to make something happen. Yes. And when you're just at the end of the rope, God says, are you going to let go now? <laughs> and then he comes through. But in, 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 to us, it's our 11th, you know, 11.59 for us, you know. You need to pray a let go yes. life uh, prayer over our audience. Just a couple of last words yeah. and, and pray for the folks. I felt like throughout the entire time we were talking just now, somebody's Somebody got healed of a back condition. Wow. And right in the small of your back, you know, you've been having that. Even just now, when you came, you had that condition, that pain, and now it's gone. We used to snap, snap to your feet. You find the pain is gone. Is the pain gone, bro? Praise the Lord. As you let go. Now, this is not, this is not standing in faith. You, the pain is gone, right? Yes. Wow, praise the Lord. What God has done for them, God wants to do for you. Thank yeah. you, Lord. 
And you're going to do that right where you are. As you, as you listen to living the let go life, it's not about, about holding on and you've got to know this, you've got to know that. Just let go. Wow. And you see the supply flow, wow. the healing begin to flow just like for wow. these precious people. Let me pray for you. Remember this, the Lord says, casting all your cares. It's almost like, Lord, take it, Lord. And, and let's, let's do like a business like, you know. See your, your cares right now. Hold it in your hands, right? Everyone just do this right now. All right, see that worry that is foremost in your heart and mind right now. See that in your hand right now, okay? Now just close it. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Into your nail-pierced hands. I cast all these cares completely, irreversibly. In Jesus' name. It's now in your hands. It's now in your hands. And I thank you, Lord. Every time now that the devil reminds me, what are you going to do? I'll say, you've got it. Amen. Amen. Remember that. All right. You've got it, Lord. You've got it. He tell you, wait, wait, wait. you've got it. What's going to happen? You've got it, Lord. Okay. Have that attitude. Amen. And live the let go life. Yeah.